Hello, this is uh, Dave and welcome to Equity Story. I'm with the Wolf and obviously, as we always say, this is just a general shared advice and not personal advice as per the disclaimer you can read here on the website. Wolfie, 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 how are you doing, mm. champion? Now, there's a, lot to talk, there's a lot to talk about today. And the first thing I want to do is just, you know, have a look at the markets. And uh, obviously, we can see ourselves starting to tread down. It doesn't look too good. We've seen the Dow sort of, you know, really a bit of a waterfall motion starting to happen, looking like it's possibly going to go lower. And uh, of course, uh, the, the NASDAQ again, maybe on a little bit of support here. But I think if it breaks that, obviously going lower. So the market's having the pullback, um, a pullback. Uh, which we said or said was going to happen um, around this sort of time. Um, it's funny. It's like, um, obviously, the situation in Ukraine is serious, right? Uh, we don't know how far it's going. But what I just want to do today, Wolf, just before we look at the shot, look at the stocks, just to give some idea of previous wars, right? And uh, this I stole off a really brilliant English guy, right? Who's, who's I think, gives some great uh, lectures. And we can see how the market wolf um, uh, has reacted in previous wars, right? So, yeah, okay, maybe Pearl Harbor's a long time ago, but uh, it's a back with that one. <laughs> but you can see, Wolf, the market uh, uh, often, if you've had that dip, uh, historically, a month later, the markets are back one percent. Three months later, they're back two percent. Six months later, back five percent, and eight months later, back. 8.6% or whatever, right? Now, mm. there are variations in that. Obviously, there's the other things that you've got to consider, right? So it's not, nothing's that simple. No. But what you can see is that when every single pullback we've had, um, the ones that have gone on with it and have really haven't recovered so quickly is where we've had issues with a, a stronger moves up in the oil price. Yeah? Especially mm -hmm. Suez Canal and Ab Oil Embargo. And Initially, you look at that and you think to yourself, um, well, that's not a good sign at the moment with oil going up. So, but when you look at um, sort of uh, other sort of maps, and I'll get them up here, which um, uh, bring it over. When you look at other maps explaining, this is in the US of A. So historically, this is the demand for oil, this little blue line at the top. And this is the production of oil, right, in America. So you can always see there's been a big issue and a uh, big gap. But since 2005, the oil production uh, in the U.S. has gone up considerably. Now, I know that is till 2020. I don't believe it's changed too much since Biden, although Biden has slowed it down. But generally speaking, even though oil's gone up, you, you you look at the U.S. market and you think they're going to be a lot better prepared for it, Wolf, than they were in the past, yeah? Mm -hmm. So when you look at these two points, right, um, it makes me a lot more, uh, I think, uh, and you look at the historical data, the chances are whether we pull back 5 or 5% 5 or 10%, it is going to be that opportunity and that opportunity to buy stocks to have to have a trade and and make some possibly some medium term money right i yeah. think the hard thing about our market at the moment is obviously we've got bigger inflation issues uh but the interesting thing is where in some ways i don't think that can be quite a, a problem as it was before in the usa they're talking about putting um interest rates up to one percent at the moment at the end of this year to slow down inflation well you know after the gfc they they put interest rates down in America to 1% to stimulate the economy. So I don't see even if they're putting interest rates up to 1%, it, it being really that detrimental uh, to the market. Now, the only caveat in that is obviously if they start putting interest rates up a lot more than what the market expects. And I think obviously the commentary and the market will tell us that. So the purpose of what I'm trying to say to people is that, yes, this is a worrying time. But it's going to be an opportunity. So, and that opportunity could come in two weeks, it could come in three weeks, it could come in four weeks. But it's generally speaking, fairly quick historically, Wolf, right? So, yes, but, but it does depend on how long this war will last for, possibly, right? Yeah, definitely. That, that and, is and, probably the, the key here. And 
whether it's a short conflict or a drawn out conflict, we just don't know at this stage yet. But that's why we're, in a, we're not in a rush to buy anything at this stage. So we're going to talk about some stories now. And there's a lot of stories that put in out good announcements out. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be putting any of these on as a trend at the moment. Some of them, I think if you're in them, especially the dividend plays, you hold them because some of the dividend plays are doing reasonably well. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. the good ones that we're going to talk about, you know, get them on the watch list and uh, see where they are in maybe a month or, or two months. Yeah. Uh, Wolf, and the first one we're going to talk about is PTB. Now, this is a dividend play, and this stock is trending absolutely beautifully in mm -hmm. this market. What did you make of their announcement? Well, you know, the most important thing for when you look at the announcement is, are the earnings okay? Because as long as the earnings are okay, that means the dividend will be okay, right? And they were okay. And, you know, we've seen previously that they are on the up with their business, uh, with their world opening up. They're going to have more work um, in a propeller maintenance, plane maintenance business. So for, for me, still a hold. Brilliant. Uh, next off the cab, Wolf IGL. Mm -hmm. Again, a great looking chart. Mm -hmm. um, I think we did put on a little trend up to two dollars, but it's 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 got everything, hasn't it? Uh, un inexpensive, a good dividend, and uh, obviously growing the revenue. I mean, what more do you want? Exactly. So again, tick pretty much all the boxes as a dividend play. Um, and a dividend, uh, I think at, what, at the moment about seven, eight percent. Uh let me just double check that. That was it. Was you know at least had to be seven percent. Remember, because we don't get out of bed for less than seven. <laughs> so this one was uh let's have a look if they updated it yet but it was 10 percent right and and really accept exceptional uh, decent revenue growth as well wolf um their their NPAT was up pretty uh, quite uh, strongly what does that uh where's their p ratio now wolf can you well it's that... still look i'm still looking at it's 11 i mean it doesn't matter if it's 8 or 11 no it's still cheap right yeah. Um, the fact is that they're growing. That's the key here for me. Um, and I think the guidance also said they're going to have a very nice year, right? If I, that's also very, quite important as a dividend play. So from that, from those sort of numbers, you're comfortable. Even if you're trading this, you're comfortable. If you're just for the dividends, you're very comfortable. Absolutely love it, Wolf. Um, mm. Good story. NEC. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, you, you like this one, Wolf. Go on, tell us. Uh... Yeah, definitely one of the better results today, Dave. So pretty much really strong numbers across all the metrics from the revenue to the bottom line. And they really uh, you know, outdid themselves on the, on the dividend line. So for me, it's almost going to turn into a dividend play. Let's have a look what the numbers say here, dividend-wise. But that was a big increase. So pre presumably, you're going to be looking now almost, what, 5 6%, 6% dividend yield. So it's almost... Like for us, this is going to be a dividend play. And Wolf, I mean, except pretty good revenue growth. I mean, uh, fifteen percent. Uh, it's not too bad at all. And what was their outlook like, Wolfie? Yeah, positive. Um, you know, things are still going quite well. So I, I can't see that changing in the next eight six months. So still a positive outlook. Uh, Wolf, AP Eagers came out. Mm -hmm. Now they've been trending quite nicely recently. Uh, but unfortunately, on the charts, just struggling to get back over trend. So obviously, I wouldn't look on that one technically yet. But um, how did you sort of make? Uh, what do you make of that announcement? Because I had a quick uh, glance of it; it didn't look too bad. David, you know, you know what? Actually, the, I wasn't. Uh, the actual results didn't grab me as much as what the, the other announcement was. So I'm like, well, well forget about the, the numbers. I don't. Want, this is not exciting. This is exciting. And the announcement was that they they signed an exclusive distribution agreement with BYD, the Chinese electric car company in Australia. So they're going to be the ex only exclusive uh, distributor here in Australia, which is bloody brilliant. No, that's good. Oh, of course, <laughs> if, if that is if that is the the way forward with electric vehicles in Australia, uh, and BYD has got some traction in Australia, then surely that AP is going to do quite well. Yeah. No. Ex Wolf, I agree, excellent. But uh, I mean, they're sort of, uh, I think their profit after tax went from 156 million to 330, which is, mm. I, I suppose it's built, it's, built in, it's built in the share price, isn't it, really? 
Well, let's uh, have a look at the APEs, actually, PE, just to, just to get a, uh, a feel for that. What are they actually sitting on? Um, an APE, let's see, let's see, 10 with a 4.5% yield. Again, it doesn't look too expensive. You know, if you're in it for that 4.5%, 5% dividend yield, not bad. If you're holding it. Yeah. Thanks a lot for that, Wolfie. Uh, next one, OCL. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know you love the story, but obviously you don't love the valuation and, and the market changing valuations. Uh, what would you, if you were in this wolf, you're still a, a nibble down to $12, down to $10 if it goes that low. Are you still a long-term nibble at this? I'm a, I'm a still a long-term holder and a nibbler, yes. Um, but I have to, as a responsible investor, wait for the force to, to stop because it's still on a way down, even though I've got some trend lines to maybe give me that cushion, the market at the moment is still re-rating a lot of the story. So I'm, I'm waiting. And look, the, the result of that was actually very good. So if, you know, still ticking a lot of boxes for me as an investment, but I'm nervous. You know, we, we've, we've seen a lot of these high P flying stocks getting hammered. Yeah, well, so we're going to see a few of those later. Mm. Uh, PPL, Wolf, mm. superb announcement. Mm -hmm. and, it was. And I think in a normal market, this would... Uh, this would be going a lot higher, but um, certainly I think good enough to hold it, hold it in that sort of range for the moment. Yeah, I agree. I think it was a normal, normal market. We'd probably see this already north of ten cents, Dave. This is a really, really good story that delivered a very good result. Um, you know, I think they talked about the full year result will be at the uh, upper end of the guidance, which is excellent. So there's also a chance of outperformance uh, for the second half. I'm liking it. Well, opportunity knocks. I mean, this is yeah. one. If it got back to five cents in a, a bigger market pool, you'd be you'd be lapping up, right? Um, let's have a look at JYC Wolfie Joyce. Mm -hmm. um, again, another didn't play. They're holding mm -hmm. up reasonably well. It's up four percent mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. um, possibly could could work its way a little bit higher. It seems to be trading in the range at the moment. Yep. Um, very good. These dividend plays, low valuations. This is where to go at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's obviously helping, helping, isn't it? So, you know, finding the right theme to get onto it nice and early, which we did with the dividends, their value dividend plays, uh, and they are holding up extremely well. EGL, Environmental Group Wolf, which again, mm -hmm. has got a pretty respectful chart. Now, you, you most probably in this market sell this if it went below 25 because you can't take any prisoners. But mm -hmm. how, what did you make of the announcement they put out? Uh, yeah, again, pretty good growth across all metrics you know this is classified as an environmental play uh, and there is some some uh, stuff in there that's environmental for sure they've got the old rcr business in there as well dave so you know i'm watching it closely to see how it performs in their hands and it's actually profitable so all up not bad not bad at all you know that's why the the market's getting interested in the story well from agi ainsworth uh mm -hmm. you know look at these numbers here i think uh revenue up uh, 28 percent and the market applauding that mm -hmm. and uh, you know i wouldn't be trending this at the moment um so the story is gradually turning around isn't it yeah actually it's been turning around for the last six months i think that's always the first when it started to show its true colors when it crossed those red lines dave back in uh 2000 january 2021 so that's 12 months now of recovery and today's announcement confirms that the recovery is on track so you know, if we had a normal trending market, Dave, I'd be jumping onto jumping onto this. Yeah. Well, again, it's one for the watch list, and and this is what we got to do. We look for these stocks, keep adding them to watch list, so we know what to look at, especially when we when the market yep. does turn. Can we have a look at its brother company, um, Aristocrat Wolf, yes. which is uh, having a bit of a fall from grace and uh, issues, obviously Ukraine. Yes. Yeah. Look, it's, it's the, the 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 funny thing is, I'm not many people probably know that, but. Uh, um, Plarium, which they, they bought out, um, has pretty much majority of its offices in Ukraine. And they finally mentioned something today in that announcement regarding that. We talked about it a few months back. Just be careful. Um, so, yeah, look, at the moment, I certainly would not be there. I'd be waiting for the markets to settle down and see where it takes us. Because if there is a full-scale war, they'll probably, you know, the business will suffer. The, the play side business will suffer because they're there. Like I said, the majority of the people are in Ukraine, all the developers. All right, Wolf, Eluka, mm -hmm. a good looking chart. It's really reflected again in a, a, a solid announcement. 
Yeah, absolutely. Very, very good announcement, actually. And the, the beautiful, brilliant thing about the Looker, Dave, is they almost control the markets uh, and the pricing. So you love it when you've got control over your own destiny. Wolf, I'm just going to go for the last stocks fairly soon because uh, there's obviously issues with uh, well, Rio, Rio was uh, excellent. And mm -hmm. I think uh, what we're seeing at the moment with Rio is a little bit of profit taking. Mm -hmm. It has had a run. Um, yeah. But, you know, look, BGA, a very, very, very good announcement. But um, they, bottom line, they've been purchasing a lot of, uh, they've been buying it, haven't they? So the. Yeah, they have. So unfortunately, on paper, it looks brilliant. But, uh, you know, the, the, the most important line, which is the EPS line, was flat. So it's almost like a fake result, isn't it? Yeah, but for the future, maybe. Why? Yeah, well, exactly. Uh, right now, it's, it's, you know, it's just, you, you think to yourself, well, I'm stagnant EPS wise. Uh, hopefully next year it will pick up. Well, Flight Center, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it promised a lot. It hasn't really gone on with it. Um, mm -hmm. With the announcement, would that, do you think it could go on with it? Look, again, I'm looking at the bigger picture and then the global picture of travel and post COVID, it should be very beneficial to flight centers and other space in that. But then I'm thinking, you know, Ukraine, Russia, Europe, maybe, you know, is there going to be disruptions again? Possibly. Um, yeah, look, I think there's better stories out there, Dave. Yeah, definitely. Um, BKL Wolf, uh, obviously selling a few vitamins around the world at the moment with uh, COVID, but uh, very expensive. I mean, I think they are doing quite well, but again, you know, when you actually look at BKL, it doesn't look too bad, but you just wouldn't be buying it because they're so, so expensive. Well, you know, profit rising 4%, versus trading on 75 times. Something doesn't compute, Dave. I don't know what, whether the market's you know, overhyping this or are they going to pick up the profits over the next thing? But it doesn't quite equate at the moment. Uh, so for me, it's just too expensive. It's always been very expensive. So I can't, I can't, I, th I don't think, I think it's just going to go sideways for quite some time. Uh, Wolf, um, any of you, uh, Appin, just the fall continuing again, just a, another lesson in buying fall, falling knives. You just don't do it. I'm not listening to big brokers because they still got to buy on this. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, CCX, again, City Cheek, obviously uh, having issues, uh, inflation, the costs are going up for them, pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, 360 getting absolutely hammered. Again, a decent top line, but the market just don't, just don't want to see companies making big losses at the moment. Yeah, well, it's extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, what a fall from grace. And it's not because the company's all of a sudden gone to shits. It's the fact that the market is just completely reversing its views on tech stocks that are burning a lot of cash. And, uh, you know, that might be burning a lot of cash for a long time. Uh, and prime example right there is 360. And look, yes, it's gone from two bucks to 14. That's a big, big red flag that, you know, the things that if, if the tech space does turn around, it might come back and it has. So you had to take that warning. Uh, but, you know, if you're not out by now, something's wrong. Yeah. Uh, Wolf Art, mm. uh, again, it's seeing a bit of a recovery, but again, being a tech stock, you wouldn't go anywhere there. Uh, mm. NTO. Full similar, it's similar, Dave. You, you've got a company that's growing its top line, like the 360s of the world, right? Beautifully, 20%. 30% outlook growth for another 20%. And then you look at the bottom line and it just blew out significantly. You think, oh my Lord, that's exactly what the market's focusing on. But I, I, I would not be surprised, Dave, if, if all these NTOs, all these things are just going, now right, no, we're going to pick up, pack up our toys. We're going to go to America to list. <laughs> it's just well, carnage here. Yeah. Or, or um... just to list completely, right? There's just some of these stocks are just not showing any value whatsoever. But, but, but you're getting the same reaction in america aren't you with these tech stocks it's not you do but you're probably going to get more love out of them you know at least more liquidity but there's just yeah it's just I, unfortunately for australia we're just dominant with your bhps and your banks it's and i think there's an article the other day saying now 60 percent is skewed towards like the top six six companies i mean that's just extraordinary all right uh cag capital health holding in there with not a bad announcement uh, yep. A and D, likewise, Wolf. Um, 
You know, you wouldn't be buying very good it. Result. Very good result. Very good result. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, this would be, I'm going to move out the top because this would be one for the watch list, right? And look, and, and if you're in it, you'd be nervous, but I probably think, you know, this is a good result, still holding the trend. Maybe there's still some support in there. Yeah. Maybe you can make a case as a whole. You know, this is the only one that's still trending somewhat. <laughs> um, SND, uh, obviously a good looking chart. I, unfortunately there's just no volume in this so we can't recommend buying it but maybe someone might be interested mm -hmm. in it uh ex except you know you just the trouble with these stories well if you just get one big guy that says i'm selling the next yeah. thing you know you're back at 60 cents i mean right. uh right. 3pl now you like the story wolf but it's <laughs> not a bad chart one mm -hmm. for the watch list correct definitely you look the the original founders are back so they are obviously reshaping the story back again how it used to be a very good growth story. They had a um, a period of about two or three years that really was difficult for them. It seems like they're back on track again. So definitely put it on your watch list and see where we where, where we're next. Um, MKL uh, just sideways, obviously fairly. Uh, no, no, that's a nice little announcement. So look, yeah. it, again, watch listed. We might come back to it. And Wolf, what's happening to the mighty N next DC? One of the market favorites. Looks like it's finding a little bit of support at uh, ten dollars. Mm -hmm. um, what's the story? Um, two issues: expensive and still lost. Right. That's it. I mean, everything else is pretty good. Great space. You know, the data set of space. Um, that's still probably going to grow for another twenty years at the very least. Uh, it's just unfortunately expensive. All right, Wolf, listen, you're absolutely brilliant. We've gone through a lot of stocks. Uh, mm. There's definitely a, a lot on the watch list. We've had a look maybe where the markets could go. What we might have a look today is try and find some stocks around the world. These are some of the biggest uh, things that Russia export, palladium, platinum, rhodium. And we might have a look uh, today and try and find some stocks uh, that might fill those gaps. And uh, also, Wolf, with oil not being such an issue, uh, gas is a is a big issue, obviously, for 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 Europe, and uh, it'd be interesting to see where they get that gas from, and obviously maybe Woodside. Um, oh, I think already Woodside because they Japan's already agreed to divert some of the, its um, supplies, gas supplies, to Europe, and and uh, Woodside is the big exporter to Japan, so they that's that their exports will probably go down to Europe for sure. Yeah, definitely. So we'll have a look at, I think tomorrow we'll, we'll have, if we've got time, I don't know how many stocks we're going to get. Uh, it's so busy at the moment, but we'll have a look at a number of stories that maybe could benefit, uh, obviously from this, uh, all these uh, import uh, or export tariffs that uh, is going to be. Yeah, but look, I think the theme is for me, looking at this week, the dividend stocks are still holding up pretty well. They're, they're delivering some good results. Uh, so they're probably still a hold. Everything else really is up for debate whether you still should be selling. And I think you probably would be looking at, at especially nervous at the tech, tech space that's still getting sold down. Uh, and yeah, putting uh, making a big watch list, Dave. You know, we've talked about enough stories over the week or the last couple of weeks to make a very nice um, watch list to start buying when we think it's right the right time to go. Wolf, absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, Wolfie. Uh... Um, brilliant commentary. I, I know you've been looking at all the stocks all morning. I don't know how you actually get so many in your head. And, and remember, I, I had to start at six o'clock in the morning, Dave. Well, Today it was uh, ridiculous. Well, and, and, and rem but remember them because um, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, yeah, listen, I'll tell you what, like I said, we'll get this pull back. We've got, we're, we've got some good stories to get into because there's a number of companies, Wolf, doing really, really well. Yeah, exactly. That's, you know, okay. so watch this space yeah